Did you think that you were free from the clutches of academia? Did you think that you were going to be allowed to sleep until noon every day? <laughs> ah, that time has passed, fools. And now, now once again, madness. And this particular installation of madness is known by the name average value. Shall we begin? <laughs> yes, yes we shall. So dudes, let's talk about average. You're used to seeing the notion of average like, could you please find the average number of chainsaws juggled by a chainsaw juggling clown if first he juggles three and then seven and then 12 chainsaws. And when you take the average, you just add all your crap up and you divide by how many different things that you have. And so if you're trying to do the average of three, seven and 12, it would be like three plus seven plus 12. Oh, that's 12. I'm just gonna, ooh, uh, Ha ha! Okay, 3 plus 7 plus 12, and you got three thingies there, bam, divide by 3. No biggie, no tootie, you know what I'm saying. But here's the thing, people, we are going on to a crazier situation where we're trying to take the average of a function, and this function can have infinity values. So dudes, here's what I mean. Let me draw you a little picture off to the side. I'm going to go to the right so don't freak out. Woo, I love it over here. All right. Dudes, let's say I got me a function, and it's all mer 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 And maybe I only care about this function between two points, like there's A and there's B. Dudes, if I want to find the average value of this function, then if I wanted to use the old formula, I would have to take each and every point between these two points, A and B. And there are infinitely many of those. I'm drawing a whole bunch of dots, but there are actually infinitely many dots there. I'd have to take all of those Y values and add all of those up, and then divide by infinity. And that's just dumb. But it turns out that some clever person found a way of getting the same and correct answer based on integrals. And so that's cool, I guess. And the equation is this puppy right here. If I'm trying to find the average value of a function and I'm going between two values, a and b, then all you do is you integrate that sucker and you divide by the length of the interval. So the equation for that is super easy. And you can just think about that as total change because that's what integral represents. And then what we're dividing by is the length of the integral, uh, length of the interval. There, words, words with stuff. Okay, so dudes, um, that's the formula, and the formula is analogous to that same thing we're looking at here. Instead of total crap, we have total change, and instead of the number of thingies, we actually just have the length of the interval. So that's cool. But dudes, let's talk about how you're going to be seeing this in problems and such. There's an advantage to this formula, which is that a formula is easy. You can just plug crap in, you can calculate that puppy, whatever you want, and it's gonna be nice and easy. Now, there's a disadvantage too, let me give you a little heads up. The disadvantage is this, the formula involves an integral. And like everything that we do that involves integrals, you're gonna have to figure out when to use which technique. Remember, when we talk about integrals, we talk about them being the same as area under the curve, and you can approximate that using left-hand sums and right-hand sums, and um, it, you also have the, the fact that if you take the integral of the derivative, those things cancel out, whatever. We have all these rules of integration, and we've probably all forgotten them by now, but we're going to need to remember those so that we can find the average value in the correct way. Now let me hit you puppies up with a couple easy examples, and then I'm going to wait until next video before I give you examples that use all of the crazy techniques for integrals that have long since passed out of our terrible, terrible meat brains. All right, easy example number one, dudes. Let's say I got me a function, and it looks like 14 times 0 0.93 to the x. If I'm trying to find the average value between these two x values, dogs, all I got to do is plug this in to the equation, and this crap is super easy. So 1 over 11 minus 6, integral from 6 to 11, of 14 times 0 0.93 to the x, dx. And dudes, I don't know what that is, but if you plug it into a calculator, you will get a number, and that number will be your correct answer. That is easy as pudding, dogs check it. But here's a slightly, uh, you know, this one's still pretty easy, but here's a slightly more interesting problem. Let's say we got something that looks like this. You got a function. You're supposed to find the average value between zero and four, but check it peeps. What you're supposed to find is not the average value of the same function I gave you here. What you're supposed to find is the average value of the derivative. Don't let that freak you out. Let's just write down the same thing we always do. The answer, whatever it is, um, First of all, dudes, you could actually find the derivative, but ain't no one got time for that. So check it out. You may see a, a more complicated version of the same problem where f of x looks really hideous. So instead of taking the derivative, let's write it out like this. It's going to be 1 over 4 minus 0, integral from 0 to 4 of f prime of x dx. 
Now, dudes, what you should remember is that the integral and the derivative cancel out. So here's what you get. 1 over 4 minus 0 stays 1 over 4. The integral of f prime, um, let me just write a little thing off to the side. I'm going to change it to green. Yes, I love it. Um, let's make a little note that the integral of f prime is just equal to f. Dudes, the antiderivative cancels out with the derivative, and you get back to the original function. So if I have this whole integral of f prime from 0 to 4 thing, that's the same thing as actually ending up with the original function again and evaluating it from 0 to 4. So dudes, if I plug this in, I keep my 1 over 4, I get f of 4 minus f of 0. And let's make sure we know actually what that number should be. All of this without a calculator, may I add. Um, what we're going to get is, 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 remember the function is x squared. This is going to be 1 over 4. 4 squared is 16. 0 squared is 0. Subtract those puppies, and you get 16 over 4, which is 4 for your final answer. All right, that last bit was just math, but dudes, let me say again what we're doing up here. What we're doing is we are looking at this integral of f prime, and, all, and the main trick to this entire problem is we're just saying that the integral and f prime cancel out. The integral of f prime is equal to the original function f. Antiderivatives and derivatives cancel out. So once you know that's true, then the integral of f prime is just f, and you still have to evaluate that puppy from 0 to 4. And remember, that's what that vertical line means. It means we've already taken the antiderivative, but we still have to evaluate things by plugging in the top point, plugging in the bottom point, and subtracting. So dudes, that's what we do, and it works out easy as cake. And all you have to do to knock this puppy out is to remember that, uh, first of all, to realize they're asking you to find the average value for f prime, and not just f, and then to remember this whole integral cancels out derivative thing. All right, dudes, as always, check out the next video for the complicated examples because they will be glorious and make you coat your face in granola. Goodbye!